Okay, we're here and we're looking at Ampere's Law, or I should say Ampere's Law. And this is something that we use in uh, magnetism in order to find magnetic field strengths. Um, this is, I like to tell students, uh, this is kind of the equivalent to magnetism as Gauss's Law is in electri electricity, electrostatics. Um, it's a simplified way of finding magnetic field strengths. We use it for three cases. In this case, we use long wires, long straight wires, a long solenoid where we can ignore the ends, where the, the fields curve and get messy, and a toroid. And one thing to think about is, you know, why, why does this work so well for those three cases? And in one word, um, I guess the answer would be symmetry. Symmetry is used to simplify the calculations. Um, in particular, we have to think about what does Ampere's Law look like? What does it say? Well, we write it in a fancy way as a line or path integral of magnetic field times a length. And that integral is equal to a constant, a uh, mu, a magnetic constant, times the current that goes inside or through the path that we're talking about. And the key here is, is a path. Okay, that, that's represented by this DL. And notice it's, it's basically a dot product. Um, we're looking at what path does the magnetic field take that's produced by a particular current. So as an example, suppose we have a long wire that has current flowing through it. Now think about what does that magnetic field look like? Well, it's a bunch of concentric circles. Okay, if there's nothing else around the wire, we have perfect circles of magnetism. Um, in this case, if the, if the current is flowing to the right, we can use our curly right-hand rule to show that we're going to have magnetic field coming out of the screen, above the wire, loops around, and goes into the screen below it. So something like this, if we were to, to draw. Okay. What's more, if we had compasses lined up around the wire, they would actually show a direction, a, a circulation. Okay, that's what we're really talking about here. These magnetic fields are very different than electric fields and gravitational fields, which are radial, these things are circulating. Um, you reverse the current, you reverse the direction of your uh, compasses. You reverse the direction of the circulation. Now, the fact that we have circular paths means that this integral here reduces down to nothing more than the magnetic field times the length of the path. And for circles, the length of the path, of course, is the circumference, 2 pi r. Okay, now the current inside this term, that's the current that goes through the path that we're looking at. Okay, so in this case, it's just the current of the wire. And now we have our answer. The magnetic field is mu times current divided by the circumference, 2 pi r. Okay, so that's that's really not so bad. Um, if you wanted to do this using Biot-Savart, uh, it's certainly much more complicated. You have to integrate the cross product. Um, you have to figure out how to set up the integral. The integrals can you know, typically are, are are fairly tough um, in order to solve. Often you have to look them up for for weird shapes of wires and stuff. So, Ampere's law in, in two steps, we're we're done. Um, another case that we can do here might be something like a toroid. It's pretty similar to the straight wire, it turns out, which is kind of kind of weird if you think about it. So, if we draw a toroid, a donut, and you have loops of wire running around it. Okay, I'm not going to draw them all in. Uh, think about what the magnetic field looks like. Okay, it runs around through the, the center of the donut, okay, through that tube, and that can go either clockwise or counterclockwise. That's really not so important right now. Um, but the point is, again, it's it's a circular path. 
that it's a circulation, it's a continuous magnetic field inside, there's no leakage, very symmetric. So what does Ampere's law tell us? Well, the integral would be magnetic field times length of the path. It's a circle again, because of the symmetry. Here's another 2 pi r. Now it's interesting what happens on the right-hand side. Now we, we've got some current going through the wires. So you, you have all these loops. Let's say we have n loops of wire. They get twisted around this, this donut, <laughs> around the toroid. And every one of those loops, every one of those individual loops is a little magnet. It produces its own little magnetic field. Um, if you have n loops, you have n magnets working together, making a stronger magnet. So I'm going to say the number of loops times the current of each of those loops. And so we get something that looks very similar to what we just had for a long straight wire. Now what's more, notice that there, there is this little r in the expression for, for a toroid. Um, a lot of people might think that you have a constant magnetic field or a uniform magnetic field, but you don't. It's a little bit stronger on, on the inside part of the donut, and it gets a little bit weaker as you get towards the outside the portion of the donut. Okay? So here, um, here, here are two examples of Ampere's Law. And, um, you know, ho hopefully we get these three shapes. It's certainly easier than using Biosavat. And in uh, a different video, we'll take a look at Biosavat itself. But until next time, See ya.